What's up everybody? Welcome back to another video. This week should be a good one. We're way up north again in Yalavari, Sweden for the second World Cup weekend. It is starting to get towards December, so two o'clock in the afternoon, looking pretty, looking pretty dark out there, which is fun, but uh, kind of makes the uh, videoing a little bit hard. So I thought this week we would do a little something inside, meet, meet some of the guys and uh, answer some of you guys' questions. So enjoy the video. All right, okay people. So uh, we're here with the US men's World Cup team in uh, Yalavari, Sweden. And uh, I thought this week we could do a little q and A. I I posted on, uh, <laughs> we're also making some copy. I posted on Instagram and a bunch of people responded with questions. So <clears throat> some of them are person specific, but just so everybody knows, in case you didn't watch last week's video, we have Johnny, Zandon, Gus, JC, Luke, who maybe you can't see, and Zach here. So yeah, we have like 20 questions and we'll just go through a few of them here and just like discuss. And uh, yeah, what are some tricks for being, for being away from home for the entire season? Um, for those that don't know, we're from the US and the World Cup is mostly in Europe. So we basically spend four to five months in Europe uh, all winter long. And it can be a little tricky. So yeah, you don't got any wise ideas? Yeah. Have good buddies. <laughs> good buddies. Yeah, that helps. Cod mobile. Lots of, <laughs> lots of cod mobile. Definitely cod mobile. So a little, little invention called Lots of cod mobile. Yeah, a lot of people in it. Definitely. <laughs> Alright, next question. Alright. Um, oh yeah, someone asked, someone asked about Ski Fleet, and they're curious about total numbers, grinds, factory versus shop grinds, testing, and how it changed when we got to the World Cup. Which I think is a great question, because I think for most of us, this changed significantly when we came to the World Cup. So, I'll, I can start. Like, me, I uh, race on mad shoes, and probably have like 40, 30 to 40 pairs of skis on the World Cup, which is sounds like an insane amount and it's not really necessary for uh, anybody, but you know, we, and I have all factory grinds, no uh, shop grinds, but before I came to the World Cup, I had maybe like between six and 12 pairs of skis and they were almost all uh, shop grinds. So I think the theory is that here in Europe, like where most of the factory grinds are tested, they work pretty well, but uh, in the U.S., it can be good to get shop grinds like from Coldwell Sport or Boulder Nordic Sport because they test all in the U.S. and it's quite a bit different there. So that's what it's like for me. But everybody here skis on different brands, so it can be different. For yeah, them. I'm on Rosignol and just learned like a week ago from my wax tech, who like does most of the work on my skis. I don't actually like touch the skis that much. He told me I have 47 pairs right now between skate and classic. <laughs> <laughs> which is actually pretty surprising to me because mostly over here like I just help test and then like go on race skis so I don't actually like see the whole process much which I kind of like actually like I'm not huge into skis and like Ben all of them are uh, factory grinds so like uh, my tech will get skis from Rosignol and test them and see if they're like good enough to be like in the, the 47 and then he'll try to like kick out the old skis that don't like win tests anymore yeah the Fisher guys have Pretty much always been on factory grinds. I don't know, you, yeah. 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 Same in the US, just like more skis. Right. You know, the same grinds, just like different molds and stuff. Also, it's factory. going to change a little bit soon because our team is getting a, uh, like their own grinder, so we'll do like yeah. more grinding. Like the techs will do more of their own grinding, which will just complicate things further and make it so we know even less about what's yeah. happening. Yeah. Definitely. <laughs> Another good question How many intervals and strength workouts do you guys do per week during the season? Um, I feel like it probably varies a little bit for for many of us, depending on how many times we race during the weekend. But another change about being on the World Cup is that you pretty much race every single weekend <clears throat> for the majority of the season. So, um, yeah, like for some of us who race three times, we might do less intervals. And for some people who race once, we might do more. But I would say, in general, most of us probably do intervals once a week and try and do strength twice a week, but that can be hard. <laughs> Sometimes it's more like 0 0.5 times a week. Yeah. <laughs> Kitchen strength counts as 0.3. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. 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 But um, sometimes, also, we do strength on Sundays after the races, which can be a good, like, little trick. Um, that one maybe counts for two, but it sucks extra. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> if you do it on Sunday, though, it's kind of nice because, like, strength can be really tiring. So you sort of lump the 
tiredness in with that day's race. And then on Monday, you just go to recovery, you know? <laughs> yeah, like, Which, like, is questionable <laughs> training tactics, but it can yeah. feel kind of nice. <laughs> the recovery uh, of a nine-hour bus ride. Right, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Oh, here's a good one. How about some of you guys' favorite stress-relieving activities during the season? I was going to say, like, playing video games is stress-relieving, but also mm-hmm. very, I was going to say, kind of <laughs> pretty anxious when playing with you guys. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the video games can be stress inducing yeah, for sure. Yeah. It's a fine line. But sometimes um, just like going for a ski, honestly, by yeah. yourself, or like an afternoon run. Yeah. Definitely. Kind of get away and just like do your thing. Well, oh, we also have one where somebody wants to know what Zach's least favorite NBA team is. <laughs> least favorite team? Uh huh. Oh, man. I think probably the Golden State Warriors, just because oh. of Draymond Green. I think he's so unlikable. And, uh, <laughs> what if he watches this? Well, then I hope he knows what if he <laughs> And Chris Paul, really unlike. It's just a really unlikable yeah, team. It is. Yeah. Stephen Curry is great. Wait, but is Chris Paul. Uh, yeah. 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 They're just really easy to root against. And yeah. My Me favorite too. team is obviously the Timberwolves, but. Uh, and I got in a fight with the. Yeah, they just yeah. with the Warriors. Bad so. attitudes all around <clears throat> on that team. Yeah. <laughs> what are some tricks we have for replenishing after three races in a row? That's actually a good question because I think some of us could probably get better at this or during a three race period. I don't know, but the viewers are going to have a killer shot of the <laughs> <laughs> Oh, shoot, sorry. I didn't see. Just, like, replenishing fluids? Or, uh, I meant, I think probably more like eating. Sleeping? Uh, replenishing your... Oh, gosh. Sometimes it's hard to just, like, you don't yeah. really have much of an appetite, honestly. But Big you kind time. of just have to force it down. Yeah. That's when you eat sweets. Honestly, forcing it down and eating sweets is... Uh, <laughs> eating sweets. Yeah, tricks. candy. Big time. That's nice. Yeah, I feel like if you're hungry and you all all you want to eat is like ice cream, it's better than eating nothing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. like I just whatever you can stomach, you just have to eat it. Totally. Yeah, sometimes it's gonna be hard to work down like a uh, you know like a yeah. risotto or something like that. <laughs> so, <laughs> some mochi <laughs> hits the spot every once in a while. Yeah. Also, also getting some uh, some sugary drinks is good. Oh, right, here's one we could all just uh, rattle off something. What's the best classic technique cue we've ever heard? Mm-hmm. I think the best classic technique cue I've ever heard is. So, somebody said, like, try to focus on arm swing, you know? And for me, for some reason, when I think about that when I'm striding, thinking about, like, really, like, swinging my arms like a pendulum, it just helps me to, like, balance out the kick and, like, stay really well um, balanced and with each with each motion. So, I don't know. Thinking about arm swing, for me, is, uh, is helpful. Yeah, mine's mm-hmm. similar, I think, just having heavy hands. Yeah, I know, yeah. Mine I feel is, like the uh, reason the, the arm swing is such a good one is because you want to like try to set your kick with your body weight instead yeah. of by pushing down your foot. So like the arm swing is good because it just like sinks your body weight onto the ski. Right. Which mm-hmm. is like setting the kick with your body weight rather than your muscles. Yeah. One for me in double pulling too is like trying to think about having my hands like closer here instead of like, like you can swing your arms well, but like kind of try to have them end up like closer to your head so you can like drop down into your poles right. more. And then like, use like your elbows and lats instead of like when they're farther out you have to like tricep it yeah and it's just a longer lever too when they're further out just yeah like more tension more, on your muscles yeah more like moment all right what's the uh what's the stupidest thing one of us has done on the world <laughs> <laughs> johnny not having his poles on <laughs> <laughs> where was that in the yeah that was pretty fun it was literally like three two one go and johnny was doing it with <laughs> Yeah. I mean, mine is probably uh, going too early in the tag zone in that one. Uh, yeah, no. <laughs> that's like uh, actual peak stupid. Yeah, in the but yeah, I, I like overstay. started skiing too early in a, at the World Champs team sprint, and my teammate wasn't able to like get to me in time, so I had to hit the brakes at the very end of the tag zone and got like my heel got hooked from the back, and it was a whole thing. Yeah, that was brutal. <laughs> yeah. I think maybe the dumbest thing you've ever done is stepping in that poop. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> At the track stop and that actually door. was the dumbest thing I've ever done. Yeah. That was so avoidable too. Um, what's colder or slash? Here's one for the Alaskans. What's colder and darker or colder? It's just. <laughs> what's colder slash darker in November slash December? Fairbanks or Finland? Uh, depends <laughs> where you are in Finland. Yeah, Finland's <laughs> I knew yeah. you were gonna say that. <laughs> well, <I'm not> saying... <laughs> no, I, actually, I feel like where we just were was, was worse than. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Was worse than like the, the places that we go. You said Finland. I think Finland was where we just were. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would say like, yeah. So colder, yeah. colder and darker. Fairbanks I don't know about really colder though. I mean, we were in Fairbanks. So that was early November, I guess. I've never been there this time of year. 
Yeah. Well, look, you kind of Ruka or Munio? Because I was thinking Munio, but maybe yeah. Ruka. But Finn or Ruka or Fairbanks is um higher than Ruka. But it's still like dry too. That's like yeah. I feel like the general consensus is probably. I think uh, Fairbanks is similar. Is anyone watching this? Oh, and also for reference, we have uh, three different copies <laughs> going here. One from Kenya, <laughs> one from Costa Rica, <laughs> and one from uh, <laughs> Ethiopia. All right. And a Colombia. I know because I went to Ghana. How excited are the Team Berkey people for a race on home soil? <laughs> for Zach, he was like, let me scooch forward on this one. Well, I think everybody's really excited about Minneapolis, but for me, like having grown up there and uh, being based out of there in the summer and fall, it's really cool. Yeah, it's going to be, I mean, also to like be able to just stay at your apartment for a World Cup race is going to be really wild. Because mm -hmm. we live out of a bag so much that to like actually be home and be on the World Cup will be really weird, but really cool. Yeah, honestly, back to the original question of like, what's the, the hardest thing about being uh, away from home or whatever it was? Is, like living out of a uh, living out of a bag gets really old. Mm. <laughs> Okie <Okay>, afterbirth. This <laughs> <laughs> is pretty good. Hmm. That is sort of an Okie okay afterbirth. What was that? Oh, my favorite airport bathroom voice. There's a twenty Beijing, answer to this. Beijing. <laughs> Beijing. When we were in China, the oh, airport bathroom was actually just a hole. It was like a drain that had no like drain cover. No, it did have like little handholds. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know. so yeah, that one was pretty crazy. I'm probably I'm not sure I've ever laughed harder in my entire life than when I first saw that thing. <laughs> Any competition-related superstitions out there, boys? I know we got one. <laughs> <laughs> Not that one. <laughs> <laughs> standing, <laughs> the standing has to roll out his legs before every race, yeah. right? I always take a shower in the morning before a race. Um, both for the superstition and because it feels really good. So. I don't know. I feel like if I have a really bad race in a certain pair of sunglasses, I don't want to wear them anymore. Yeah, yeah. I, agree. <laughs> I agree. I agree, honestly. We're just sad. I'm out of glasses, then, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I'm all out of glasses. <laughs> Let's see what other ones are right here. Is Gus single? Uh, not. I'd say no. Oh, oh, wow. Wow. I don't like this one at all. It's Woo. Oh, here's a good question that I wasn't even sure about. Does fueling look different for any of you guys on recovery versus hard training days? Well, I was just saying the other day how I feel like off days sometimes are when I'm the hungriest. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Aren't you supposed yeah. to have like more protein on off days? Yeah, say? I think so. Yeah, more protein. Yeah. Less mm -hmm. carbohydrate. Yeah, right. Yeah. I feel and like, like yeah, protein, focusing yeah. on carbs more when you're doing a lot of hard stuff and mm -hmm. protein more when you're trying to recover, but yeah. kind of yeah, just yeah, always ends up eating tons of carbs at all times. Yeah, I feel like you <laughs> eat a lot of carbs all the time, but... I tend to just eat McDonald's on an off day. Yeah. Or just like junk food, day. honestly. It's kind of bad. Cheat yeah. day. Well, uh, Dream you a ski team sponsor? That's yeah. a good one. That is a good one. Ooh, Lock, someone with a lot of money. Lockheed Martin. Like, uh, oh, yeah, Lockheed Martin. What the hell is that? If Apple hooked the whole team up with Apple on the iPad. Yeah, <laughs> yeah dude, Apple would be a good one. Uh, oh, do we interact with other teams while not racing? We definitely do. We just say hi a lot. Okay, look at the uh, we say hi to a lot of the other teams. And they sometimes they have back. And then at the end of the year, we all break down our barriers and actually talk about. Things. I know. Like, Why did we do this all year yeah. long? Yeah, yeah. yeah. we got to get that going. Big time. And yeah, we interact it with those. Carries into the next year. Yeah, you know? sometimes it works out. We interact with the Swedes probably the most. Yeah. Or Canadians. Or the Canadians. And the yeah. Canadians and Cyril. And Cyril from the <laughs> Swiss team. <laughs> and fantastic guy. All right. Also, Renee <laughs> Anderson wants to know what uh, our superpower of choice would be. Oh, that's a good one. Uh, probably teleportation. Yeah. Flying, maybe. That's such a boring <laughs> one. Flying would be sick, though. Flying would be so Breathing good. underwater would also be sick. Talk to animals. Yeah, that could be cool. The like shapeshifter. I just feel like animals wouldn't have much to say, you know? Yeah. What's, the, what's the, our favorite circuit we've ever raced on? Super true. Isn't that like... Oh, wait, yeah. That definitely gotta be the race. NCAA. Dude, yeah. high school. High school. High school. Was high school. Yeah. ASA. Friggin' Bill Copley. <laughs> Youth skiing and lollipop races. World Cup is... World Cup's definitely fun, but... World Cup, it like almost feels a little different than a lot of the other ones. We were kind of oh, yeah. this morning. Well, the other ones you don't like live on the circuit, yeah. you know. Like the thing skiing, you just like go home and go to school. Right. <laughs> yeah. Like if we were racing the World Cup, but like also going home and going to school, I think it would be like insanely fun. Be but yeah. the World Cup comes with like a lot of other challenges, which are still fun, but in sort of a different like adult type way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Where you have a little more like a job. Exactly. Kind of yeah. yeah. Totally. Yeah. That's a good answer to how did you get into skiing? What has led you all the way to the national team? Just the answers we rattled off, like Bill Coakley. Yeah, seriously, <laughs> yeah. That was pretty much how we got Yeah, definitely. Yeah. All right, hopefully you guys enjoyed that video. It's uh, It was pretty fun answering all the questions, and hopefully it's informative. And, 
yeah, learn a little something. Also, there was one one guy on the team here who wasn't able to join, Scott Patterson. So I want to make sure everybody knows he's here as well. But he uh, he has a job <laughs> in addition to racing. Uh, he's an engineer, so he had to uh, be on some meetings and whatnot. But yeah, look out for him in future videos.